We are roughly 100 days out from the winter storm that crippled much of San Antonio, and we are joined, as we always are, on Tuesdays by San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg. Mayor, thank you for joining us, as always. Uh, I want to talk about you know the CPS Energy Review that's going on and the talk that CPS is uh, looking at rate hikes down the pike. Your reaction uh, to both of those things. I believe the, the CPS Review or the Winter Storm Review comes out mid-June. Yeah, and, and that's a critical uh, review. And so I want to make uh, something very clear. There's a tremendous amount of uncertainty uh, with regard to uh, the revenue situation at CPS. And, and, and what I mean by that is that uh, it is our commitment to exhaust every avenue to ensure that the cost of the crisis, uh, the, the price gouging that happened from the gas companies is not saddled on the CPS rate payer. And that's part of the ongoing litigation uh, against ERCOT and against the gas suppliers uh, that CPS is engaged in right now. Also, uh, we know that there's a tremendous amount of um, bad debt w w related to uh, folks who just, uh, you know, had no income and so could not afford uh, the CPS bills. And so we're also seeking relief on that. So when, when CPS presented its numbers yesterday about potential rate impact, what I said is that there is far too much certainty uh, to put those numbers out there with any kind of confidence. So we've got to continue to exhaust every opportunity to reduce that uh, burden on on CPS uh, customers, our residents. Uh, and that is true and it will, will remain true as we continue to move through the next several months on litigation, et cetera. I will say uh, that there is uh, there there is maintenance costs. This is a utility that we all own, the public owns. And there is certainly maintenance costs, but those big numbers related to the storm and related to uh, the pandemic need to have um, more um, discussion and relief uh, for the CPS ratepayer. Staying on the topic of winter storms, if we can, we heard so much about how certain neighborhoods never lost power while other neighborhoods seem to be disproportionately affected. Um, you assembled a committee on emergency preparedness mm -hmm. after the storm. What has that committee learned since then in terms of how lopsided or unbalanced the power grid is here in our city? So they're still seeking answers. Uh, and Chair Reed Williams uh, has been leading the charge on getting that data from CPS to provide a little bit more granular information about the duration of outages. Um, we know a lot of that has to do with critical circuits. Um, those um, facilities that were located next to hospitals, et cetera. Uh, but that's part of the investigation process to just really understand how those uh, blackouts disproportionately affected certain parts of our community so that we can rectify that moving forward. Again, the, the whole purpose of the investigation is to number one, find out what happened. And then two, how do we ensure that we're more resilient, that it doesn't happen again? So. Uh, all of those answers that we are expecting uh, in a report that's going to be made to the committee, to the council, and ultimately to the public starting on June 15th. You know, you talked about delinquent bills that are out there. I believe there's like $100 million. I talked to Paula Gold Williams yesterday, the uh, president and C CEO of CPS Energy, something like $100 million. Can you, are you making a pledge tonight to rate payers that they won't be saddled with the bill, or is that just more of a goal for you and the city council? Again, our commitment is to exhaust every avenue in terms of relief, not just for the winter storm crisis uh, that, that again, was um, uh, we saw price gouging, we saw rule breaking at the ERCOT level uh, that caused the kinds of bills that many utilities, including CPS, are receiving. That's number one. But the other relief that we're after is, is through the, the rescue plan and these other federal funds and state funds that are available specifically for utility assistance. Uh, the city of San Antonio has, already, has, has been for months now working on utility assistance through the emergency relief funds that we've had available. We need to continue to work on that at the state and federal level so that folks who have delinquent bills as a result of income loss during the pandemic are not saddled with that. We have to continue to work on that. Obviously, if if we could get all those funds taken care of, we would. Uh, but it's going to take cooperation uh, from state and federal leaders uh, to, to help those at the local level, including CPS customers, but also across the state 
and across the nation. And that's what we're working towards. Shifting gears to talk a little bit about vaccinations. With summer upon us, I want to ask what vaccination efforts are going to look like over the summer. I know that San Antonio surpassed the one million mark, but we still have a long way to go. So can you talk a little bit about that? We do have a long way to go, but I do want to emphasize is, is that uh, this community has been working together and has made extraordinary prog progress. And we've had a sub uh, three percent, often sub two percent positivity rate for uh, over two months now. And that's a credit to everyone who's been doing their part, whether it's wearing masks or ultimately getting a vaccine. And so we know now that uh, roughly 60 percent, over a million people in this community have received at least one dose of the vaccine. Uh, and, and a full 50 percent almost or just about 50 percent of the eligible population, 12 and up, have been fully vaccinated. What we're going to do is continue to move mobile pop up sites throughout the community. We're also going to continue to have our mass vac sites available for folks to walk up without an appointment. And we're going to push those vaccines out as much as we possibly can, because ultimately our goal is that when fall rolls around, that students can go back to school, uh, not just in person, but in person and with confidence, that will really get our economy back on its feet is when schools can open safely, fully in person in the fall. But in the meantime, we're going to it's an all hands on deck effort to ensure that everyone gets vaccinated. And I'm also excited to say that um, we're hearing good news from Moderna. Uh, so there's going to be a lot more opportunities for folks uh, 12 and up and hopefully at some point younger than that uh, to get vaccinated. And that's our focus uh, as we continue to uh, enjoy the, 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 the fruit of everyone's labor working together during this pandemic. Absolutely. Sense of pride that San Antonio has come so far so quickly. I, I want to talk about incentives, though, for the people that haven't been vaccinated. You talked yesterday about Six Flags tickets. I mean, are you anticipating more of these type of incentives here in San Antonio? I mean, we've seen them in other parts of the country. Uh, is that something that you yeah. think will work? I think so. I mean, it's a it's an added uh, benefit uh, for folks uh, to get vaccinated. And, and I mentioned yesterday, Fiesta Texas, uh, with, in partnership with Metro Health, is going to be providing 20,000 single day tickets for folks who get vaccinated. Uh, we know there's other organizations, businesses that are stepping up in a similar manner. Uh, we hope to uh, announce some more things over the next few weeks uh, benefits. Um, but, you know, the most important thing is for everyone uh, to to get vaccinated uh, because as as these as these giveaways have seen have shown it's in everyone's interest to do so um, whether you're a, you know a restaurant tour or you're um, you know a, a mom waiting for the child to get back to school it's in everyone's benefit for us to get vaccinated because that lowers the likelihood that anyone in our community will get sick and that way we can get back to more of the things that we enjoyed prior to the pandemic. And finally, we can see there that uh, the renovations at City Hall are complete. We love the new office. Tell us a little bit about that. Thank you. Well, this is the people's house. And as many folks know, uh, the City Hall in San Antonio is one of the oldest operating, continuously operating municipal facilities in the nation. It was built in the late 1800s, had not undergone a significant renovation, and therefore almost every system in this building was falling apart from the mechanical, uh, the electrical, the plumbing, there was flooding happening. And so about three years ago, we embarked on a historic preservation project so we can restore the dignity to the people's house. And uh, it's finally complete after three years. Uh, there's enhanced security. Obviously there's more public space. There's art uh, uh, hanging throughout the facility. It's not almost, it's not completely open yet, but it will be very soon. And and I'm glad to be back in, in the old office, um, you know, which uh, has been, again, the mayor's office for San Antonio for uh, over a century. The corner office nice. in, one, yes. in one of the most beautiful buildings in town. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that it's slowly reopening because it's had those fences around it for quite some time downtown. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, thank you for your time. Great to see you all. Have a good evening. Thank you.